Uh, Alright, so it's that time of the month again, so I went to the, uh, the food pantry, and this month they included some cheap-ass toilet paper. Like, let's just face it, this is probably, I mean, it says extra stuff, but it also says septic safe, which means it's probably quite thin. It's probably just barely above, as far as texture and all that goes, that, uh, that Scott 1000 sheet per roll single ply stuff. So, yes, um, on the good side, that is the toilet paper that I tend to use, that, uh, that 1000 sheet single ply stuff, you know, or whatever, you know, they might be distributing at the, uh, at the church up around the corner. Um, and I do that because I have a bidet attachment in my bathroom, um, I would like to put a link in the description uh, to, uh, you know, like an Amazon referral link in the description. Um, it was a little under $20, I want to say, after, uh, actually, like, I think I got that on Prime. And on the good side about Prime is, like, while Amazon is hell-bent on basically being an online shopping monopoly, which is bad, in fact, like, there was, like, last season of South Park was pretty much about that. Uh, but then what happens is, um, if you have a food stamps card and you, um, scan it or photograph it and send it to Amazon, uh, your Prime membership is basically 50% off, so... And plus, like I said, like, uh, referral links and all that, that'll give me, like, I don't know, like, three cents every time somebody clicks, maybe five if somebody buys it. I don't know. I haven't gotten a payout from them yet. Uh, I know that I got this, like, you know, if you don't get any clicks within three months, we're gonna cancel your, uh, referral stuff. I'm like, okay, so I guess I'll, like, push that a little bit. So, as per usual, um, I got up to the, uh, to the thing at the, at the food pantry day that is at the, uh, the church up around the corner from me. That would be the church that I have set for my location in this video. Uh, if this is your first, if this is your first one of my, uh, food pantry haul videos, uh, how they do it, and if this is, like, your second or third or eighth or twentieth one from me, actually, I haven't done that many, but... Maybe it is your 20th one. Maybe this is, like, many years in the future when I'm still on food stamps and food pantry and shit, and I have several dozen of these up between then and now. But, uh, you can feel free to, like, skip ahead about a minute or so. I'm just gonna go down the run-through. So, you get in queue, and, you know, or in line, as they say here in the United States, because that is indeed where I was born and mostly raised, but that's another story for another time. So, you get in queue. Uh, ideally, you'll want to be in queue by about 6 in the afternoon, especially when it's warm out like it is right now. Uh, and then they let people in, I want to say starting around 20 after 6, uh, officially 6.30. But depending on whether it can let they let you in as early as like 20 after and then what happens is first you get up there and you show them your id ideally your state id which is what i have because i don't drive or your driver's license if you are one of those people who can see well enough to drive and thus have one um uh i'm pretty sure they'll also accept a passport if you if that is all you have um and I think they've let people come in with a little voter registration slip that you get when you renew your, um, your ID or driver's license. And then you go and you sit in the folding chairs with everybody else, and then you wait for your name to be called. And they... <laughs> even though they put it in parentheses, approximately how to pronounce my name, I always knew, like, w I, I, can, I could tell when this woman like, finally pulled me up because she's just, like, staring at it, trying to figure out, like, okay, I see this here in parentheses, but how do you get, how do you get this out of this? And I say, it's, it's Gaelic, it's Irish Gaelic, it's after my, uh, my, uh, great uncle, basically, long story short, so, and then you're called up, and then, um, and then you write down your name, and your address, and your signature, 
and number in household, in my case, one, because they do not count kitties. Uh, and then you're told uh, you can pick up this month, it or this week anyway, it was two items from the table behind us. Last month, it was like one item from the table behind us. Uh, so this month, it was two items. Or this week, it was two items. So I grabbed evaporated milk because I do a lot of stuff with this. I also grabbed Starkist light tuna in water in one of these little envelope packs. And soy Starkist is now soy free, or at least this this one is, which I'm like, why did this take so long? I don't have to pay like four dollars for a can of tuna fish from Whole Foods anymore. Like, how did this take so long? Like, it's finally soy free. And I just, I don't know what the hell drove me to like read the ingredients, you know, like read the back of this again, because for the last, uh, uh, like seven years since I figured out that my food intolerance is indeed soy. Um, it's not a very strong intolerance, but I am better off um, without than with. Um, more to the point, my other allergies are much easier to manage without soy, so that shows me that it is a mild histamine reaction that I am having. It's just so, like for years, for years, like yeah, the broth, the broth that the tuna in water is in because technically it's a vegetable broth that's like kind of like diluted in water to thin it out and it's a way to use like um like basically vegetable sludge from the processing factory farms which yes factory farming does also apply to produce a lot of people don't realize that factory farming is a very broad term because they usually think of it with livestock but no, like, when you're processing vegetables to be either um, put in tins or frozen, they go through a fractory processing. And so one of the ways that, um, that they've decided to, you know, just like basically get as much use out of all of this as possible is to make a broth that has a little bit more, you know, it, it gives the tuna a little bit more of a flavor than putting it in just water. But yeah, the, the broth usually had some amount of soybeans in it, so it would always be marked, you know, contained soy, um, just to be on the safe side, since soybeans are in just about everything in the States. But no, Starkist, like, for some reason, I felt compelled to just, like, check the back, just to make sure that this is indeed one of the brands that I can't have, but no, I can now. Like, Starkist is now soy-free, and I've spent, like, two minutes talking about that, because... If you don't have a soy allergy, you're not going to get it, so that is that is why. Also, it has a couple of recipes on the back that I would not mind trying. Okay, one of them is just basically your average pasta salad with, like, peppers and stuff. But another one is for stuffed peppers, only you're using tuna instead of, like, sausage or whatever they usually use. Um, I think most stuffed peppers recipes ask for sausage or ground beef. Um... Obviously, if this one is suggesting tuna, um, I could also use, like, a can of salmon or something, or just, like, I don't know, probably whatever. Then, of course, the plainclothes nun who hugs me every time, and that will never not be creepy. If you went to a Catholic school um, that is run by a Felician order, like I did, Dominicans have a more simple or modern habit where it's just like the scarf and then like a dress. Then it's like a dress with a blouse and like one of those dresses that looks almost like it's... Mm. I know in the States we call it a jumper, but I know in the UK most regional dialects will refer... Uh, when they say jumper, it's more like a sweater in the States. But, you know, it's one of those jumper-style dresses where it's got like straps almost like bib overalls, you know, with the full bib up in front, so it's got the straps and the bib, and then it, like, ends, like, just below the knee, and I've seen Dominican nuns with the simple habit, where it's, like, you know, that little kind of, um, bib dress with a blouse underneath, like, usually a long sleeve blouse, and then, um, usually opaque tights of some variety, and they have to be opaque because, you know, modest dress, and, uh, so, yeah, uh, but yeah, if you went to a Catholic, if you went to a Felician or Dominican school like I did, where nuns still wear the habits, uh, Felician orders in the states are considered the more traditional um, orders. 
Uh, they wear the full traditional style habit, though in comparison to a lot of European <laughs> orders, this is still a modernized, <laughs> like, it's comparatively a modernized version of a traditional habit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like, none of the, none of, like, the full wings, like, Sally Field in the Flying Nun kind of deals, uh, though that was set in Puerto Rico. But no, um, so yeah, you go to a school with a more, you go to a Catholic school with a more traditional order of, uh, of sisters running the school, Plainclothes nuns will freak you out every time. Like, even... Like, it's been about... Almost three years now. I've been going there regularly enough. Almost three years I've been going there regularly enough. I would go there, like, sparingly before that, but regularly enough. I know this woman is a plainclothes nun. She has said as much to me. It still weirds me out every time, because it, it's just... It's not natural. It's not natural. Nuns... Uh, uh, Catholic sisters, they have to have the habit. They have to identify themselves. And I'm not just saying that as a matter of my own comfort, but because, um, I don't know. Like, I'm, like, there's a reason that I fell in better with the, uh, with the polytheist, uh, reconstruction, reconstructionists, um, with my pagan communities. And that's because, um, I do find it... I do like the way that uh, traditional habits and, like, monks' cassocks and all of that will set a person apart for, you know, like, this is, like, it, and it will set them apart, like, as saying, like, this is my calling. And you see, like, Buddhist nunks and Buddhist nuns, they do exist. I, I ran into, oh gosh, this was, this was back around 99, maybe 2000. Um, I was downtown and our well a little bit off downtown i was out on packard at the dairy queen on packard it was like their first opening day of the season and right behind me in queue was this buddhist nun from the zen temple just a few blocks down and you know she was very clearly afab you know apparently female at birth because she 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 was braless because i guess they don't really do that but like with the bright saffron orange robes and everything so very clearly a Buddhist nun, like, right behind me at Dairy Queen, and <laughs> I found that entertaining, because there's this misconception in the States that Buddhists are necessarily vegan, but, no, I guess, like, I, I guess, like, bare minimum vegetarian. Or maybe she was there for, like, a Misty or something. Hell if I know. But, yeah, the, uh, the plainclothes sister who weirds me out every time, and I swear she has to hug me every time, not necessarily because she hugs everybody every time, but because... She knows I went to Catholic school, and she knows I went to a Felician school, and she knows this weirds me out. Um, I know this is sounding a little tinfoil hatty, but I have mentioned before, when I've begun in there, because sometimes you just make small talk while you're signing in and everything, I know I've mentioned that I used to go to Felician school, and I know they talk. They always talk. They always talk. But yeah, she gave me like, ugh. Uh, these are obviously a Target brand, yeah, Target brand, like, like these little, like, what? How many ounces is this? This is eight ounces? Really? Okay. These little, like, things of bottled water. And probably just because I said, sure, again, you go to a Felician or even a Dominican school. A nun asks you something, you're going to say yes. A nun asks you something, you're going to say yes. You're going to say yes. This is just how it's conditioned. Um, unless you can tell from the context of the question that she was looking for you to say no. So, uh, I got extra produce. Why? The nun asked me if I wanted extra produce. So I have to say yes. Especially when she knows I went to Catholic school. So, like, what? Turn away extra produce? Do I want this all to go to waste? Um, apparently yes, because... <laughs> because I have a bit of a problem with getting a whole lot of produce, a whole lot of fresh produce, when I know I'm not going to use it all, before it turns on me, but that, uh, that book of canning and preserves that I got, hopefully I'll put that to good use. And I have at least one bell pepper in here, and, um, so I guess I'm going to make those stuffed peppers for tomorrow, because fish on Friday, because I grew up Catholic, and yes, I've been pagan for the m most part for the last 20-odd years, but 
Oh well, this is just how it is. Oh my gosh, are these parsnips? I think these are parsnips. I think these are not carrots, but actually, like... I can't tell. I cannot tell. These are either parsnips or or a really blonde carrot. I am not sure, but there's two of them. Oh, we also have... These are either really huge scallions or really tiny leeks. I can't tell. Or there's some other kind of related onion. We've got a couple of apples, and then an onion, and then a shit ton of grapes. The reason parsnips are standing out to me, so I've been brushing up on my Welsh, and uh, if you read the comment section on the little translate this sentence kind of shit on Duolingo, read the comments. I highly recommend reading the comments, even if you don't have any questions about this that might have been answered in the comments. But I highly recommend reading the comments, especially if you're using Duolingo to assist you in learning Welsh, or like myself, brushing up on your Welsh. Uh, because, because, there, we, we've decided that there's this huge saga with Owen and his parsnips, and he is obsessed with parsnips, and, <laughs> and so if those are indeed parsnips, this is hilarious to me right now, and it's gonna make no sense to anybody else in the world, but, you know, somebody else who is also, um, doing Duolingo Welsh. So, yes, oh my gosh, is this fresh okra? This looks like fresh okra. Oh, no, these are shishito peppers. Okay. It looks like fresh okra from this side. Can we see that? Let me see. Does the flashlight here work? See, it kind of looks like fresh okra from this side. Almost. They're a little bit on the drier side, it looks like. I was kind of hoping it was fresh okra. Eh, am I going to leave that? Yeah, I might as well leave that on. Okay, we've got bananas. I barely use bananas. So, um... I barely eat bananas. I don't even like to put them in smoothies. If I'm having a smoothie, I will use something else before I'll use, especially these god-awful yellow, bright yellow Cavendish bananas. Yeah, you say organic, but that doesn't make it any less of a, you know, bland yellow Cavendish, right? Um, oh, this is a brand that goes to Kroger, and I can tell from the thing. Grapes are one of those things that I like them a lot, but I don't eat them enough to suggest this. Like, I can... If you leave me alone with a bunch of grapes, I can easily sit there and eat, like, half of this thing, though I do prefer black ones. I can easily eat, like, a third to half of this in one sitting, and then put it away, and then never come back to it again. <laughs> I have this weird relationship with grapes. These are, uh cherry and grape-sized tomatoes, little mix of tomatoes. Um, so yeah, I should do something with those. I've got a few potatoes and another onion, and you really don't want, like, I know the whole, like, little thing with the potatoes and the onions in the same, uh, basket. You don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. They need two completely different moisture requirements. So doing that you're asking for spoilage of one or the other. I forget which one spoils first when you do that. But, I mean, if you use potatoes and onions almost daily, that's not going to be a big deal. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if, if you don't use them as much as you would like to, then that is asking for spoilage. So, ooh, we have a lime! Do we have more than one lime? Because we have three limes. Really? Three limes? We've got a bunch of radishes, another pepper of some sort. Looks like some kind of... Ooh, two of them. Some kind of green chilies, a couple more of these god-awful Cavendish bananas, some apples. I think that's um, baby leaf spinach. We've got more of these little tiny tomatoes. At the very least, I can make a sauce out of these little tiny tomatoes. What is stone fire mini non ancient grain? Well, that, those are definitely mini. Perfect for the toaster. Um, those might fit in my toaster. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna show off my toaster. So when I go get around to uh, well picking up again and doing a 
home tour. I do want to get, I do want to do like a follow up to that. That's going to be um, all of my antique appliances and explaining about them. But this is my toaster. This is definitely an antique. This has a, uh, uh, uh. it should have, it does have a uh, patent stamp. Oh, this is a General Electric. I was not aware of that. I did not see that right away. Okay, so looking at the font though, this is, uh, I want to put this about 30 years older than my General Electric waffle iron that apparently had the original box with it. Unbeknownst to me when I got that, uh, that waffle iron from somebody off of Craigslist a few years ago, it had the original box. I did not realize that, so I got that plus a few um, cookbooks. It said that it had the original um, little manual with cookbook, which should be in this stack. Why am I not seeing it in this stack? Did it go somewhere else? I still have it. It is here. It is amongst my things. Well, regardless, my waffle iron is a General Electric. It's 1954, and here's the funny thing. It has long been understood. It has been long understood by a lot of my friends that Nigel, who... Nigel is my favorite out of my current three cats for a number of reasons. But it's not like I treat him especially better than the other two. In fact, Murnau is always up in my business for one reason or another, so lately Murnau gets more pettins than the other two combined, probably. But that's just because Murnau is always up in anybody's business. Like, uh, I can have friends come over and Murnau's like, Hey! Your friend! Let me be all up in your shit for a minute here. And then, like, he'll never leave you alone and <laughs> until you leave, and then he's all up in my shit. He just really loves people for some reason. But no, Nigel, Nigel's my favorite boy. Nigel is best boy. And, but, uh, but Nigel does not know how to cat. Nigel does not know how to be a cat properly. He will actively avoid sunbeams. I have seen him where he will be lying right next to the sunbeam, and then as the sun moves and the sunbeam shifts, it'll touch his toes. He'll, like pick his head back up and, like, move his toes out of the sunbeam. Or not even pick his head back up. He'll just, like, move his toes out of the sunbeam. I've seen this happen. Uh, I've got some old uh, Instagram video clips of this, of Nigel doing this, or otherwise just sitting far outside the sunbeam. So, Nigel does not like sunbeams. He will actively avoid them. He is so weird. Um, Nigel also actively avoided boxes for the longest time until I got the, um, the 1954 General Electric waffle iron that had the original box. So this is a 65-year-old box as of now. I've had the waffle iron shortly after I moved in here, I got that. So I've had the box and the waffle iron for about five years. So 60-some-year-old box. This is his favorite box in the world. This is the only box he will consistently get inside. I'm going to get to uh, more stuff from the food pantry. So, um, I also got this thing of uh, La Brea Baby. Oh, this is from Kroger. This is originally from Kroger, anyway. Uh, La Brea Seeded Rye Bread. Ugh, of course it's rye. Then again, it has been a while since I've had rye bread. And, of course, because the plainclothes sister asked me, and I have to say yes, because... Catholic school. It conditions you. Uh, so, I have a, uh, I think this is an acorn squash. I know it's some kind of squash. Uh, looks like an acorn squash. And I do enjoy, oh, this needs to be used right away, because this stem is not healthy anymore. So, and I also have a horseradish. So, my little things that look like they might be parsnips, it does not look like this, so it's not a horseradish. As to what I'm going to do with the horseradish, I'm not completely sure. So I'm going to look up some recipes after this, and if, I, um, if I'm able to stream <laughs> cooking with this, I think I'll do that. Because I do like horseradish sauce. I love goddamn horseradish sauce. 
I always have at least one jar in the fridge that's been opened and one jar waiting on the pantry shelving, uh, ready to go for when that one empties out. This month's big ass parcel of meat. Let's see what's in here. Oh my gosh, this is going to be. Uh, this is going to be obnoxious. Oh, this is going to be a little less obnoxious. Okay, so we have one of these big ass pork roast boneless. Pork loin roast boneless. Frozen. Okay. We've got cooking instructions, but. I am probably going to put it in either the slow cooker or the pressure cooker just because. Uh, then we have these uh, fully cooked pork. Oh, oh my gosh. The, this brand of pork, which is contained soy. So this is going to a friend of mine along with that uh, taco meat that she did not come by to pick up. So I guess I'm going to go deliver her some meats. And we've got fully cooked pulled pork frozen, pork water, um, soybean vegetable oil, so hopefully just refined, so I'll figure it out when I have some. Uh, dexterous natural flavor, sea salt, and phosphates. Okay, so I get two porks, one pulled, one loin, and my friend, I get to go deliver her some pork witches and taco meat. Later this weekend, definitely. Probably not today. So, let's see. What's this? This is a cookie. <gasps> this is a cookie from Plum Market. This is a cookie from Zingerman's. Ah, uh, made with freshly milled whole grain flour. Please tell me I can have the cookie. Contains wheat, milk, egg, walnuts. Oh my gosh, it also contains... Yeah, it, it's got chocolate chips. Ingredients, chocolate, sugar, unsweetened chocolate, cocoa, butter, soy lecithin. So, my friend is also getting a goddamn cookie that I can't have because this is my life. And she's also getting these too because, uh, yep, contains milk, soy, coconut. So, I get, oh boy, my friend's getting a whole bunch of meat shit from me. Macaroni and cheese, again, not the greatest brand of macaroni and cheese. I think this is, I don't know, is this... Is this one that they have at the American Aldi? I don't know. I don't know. It's not great, but it'll do in a pinch. We've got more spaghetti. 100% whole grain, whole wheat spaghetti. And the horseradish fell. So, um, but that's okay. Oh my gosh. Liquid concentrate cranberry juice cocktail. Just add water. Makes 46 fluid ounces. All right, so I don't have to buy juice. Oh my gosh, I've got two of these. I really don't have to buy juice. Uh, yeah, so let's see, 46 ounces. Um, that is, uh, let's see, I usually have about four ounces, so that's about 11 um, breakfast worth of juice in each of these. Oh wait, so, wait, no. 11 and a half, because 44 would be 11, and then there's two ounces left if this makes 46. So, um, so yeah, 11, 11, 22, 23. 23 days worth of breakfast juice. Beef in juices. Ah. More peanut butter, which, as I've said before, due to the food distro, I probably am not going to have to buy peanut butter for the rest of my natural life. Uh, vegetarian vegetable condensed soup. Mm. It's got modified food starch. Mm. I don't know enough about this brand to judge whether or not I can have that. Because a lot of thin a lot of brands don't even mark soy allergy yet. It's one of the top six most common allergens in the whole world, and yet a lot of brands are just like. Err. Uh, okay, so this is just diced tomatoes with green chilies. I can definitely have that. Got another hamburger helper. Yellow cling sliced peaches in eh, an extra light syrup. Eh, better than a heavy syrup, I suppose. Cut green beans. No salt whole kernel. Golden sweet corn. Mission pride. Unpeeled apricot halves. Okay, in extra light syrup. Uh, vine ripe, low sodium, traditional pasta sauce. 
last can is potatoes. So, and then I've got a thing of shelf-stable dairy milk and a box of name-branded Cheerios. That was it for this month. I'm going to go, um, yeah, I'm going to put a bunch of the produce away, figure out what I'm doing for dinner, um, or actually it's my lunch time. I'll figure out what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, it's a bit too late for me to go out to game night. I was kind of thinking maybe, maybe, but eh, whatever. Okay, so, bats and kisses, wear your sunblock, and, um, as always, um, use the little thumb icons to denote your pleasure or lack thereof with the entertainment potential of this video. If you have not yet, um, subscribe, bell notifications, all that happy hooey that you do when you're on YouTube, and uh, what else? Oh, right, if you have more dollars than cents, um, I've got a PayPal tip jar link in the description box below, and I've also got a Patreon, and uh, next month, um, I will have a single on a compilation from Mystic Fragments Records. You can go to my Bandcamp, which should be in the links below, and check out my music. Uh, the single is going to be an original song uh, that will, at least for the first six months, be exclusive to the compilation. And yeah, that's about it. Um, uh, once again, bass and kisses, and oh, take care of yourselves, and uh, goodbye! Nigel. Hey, love. Does Nigel love me? Hey, sweet boy. I love you. I love my Nigel. Hey, love. Pay attention to me. Why won't you be on video more? Hmm? No? Is our time just our time, Nigel? Oh, look at him. He's so beautiful. So beautiful is my Nigel. And Murnau is beautiful. Murnau. No, he's looking at Phoebe. He's gonna be a jerk. Yes, he is. He's gonna pounce her. Yeah, I know. I need to pick shit up. Oh, well. Bye-bye, kitties.